Where do you find all this information? Well, let's take a look at it separately. First of all, where might you find social emotional behavior information? Well, you have classroom reports, which are teacher reports. Don't forget them. They're really critical. Not just classroom, but also playground reports. You have the, your own observation or the observations of others. Office referral data is another great source of data. A very important source of data for social emotional behavior is the family input, especially in looking at is this behavior seen only at school or is it also at home? And finally, attendance. Those are some of the sources. You probably have additional things that you could put on the list. This is not a limited list. There are other sources, but these are some critical common sources. Academic needs. Again, you want to look at classroom tests. You want to look at samples of the student's assignments that they have turned in in the regular classroom. You want to use curriculum-based assessments to the maximum degree possible. These are assessments that are based on what is actually expected in that curriculum. Of course, you want the results of the statewide assessment from year to year, not just one year, but multiple years if you have it, to see whether or not there are any patterns. And finally, you want to take any pertinent achievement results from the most recent evaluation that was used for qualification. Again, I want to emphasize here, though, that a lot of times the evaluation is based on some formal achievement results that may not be as pertinent as the current classroom achievement results. But again, it is important information, and it needs to be brought to the table. Where do you get communication information? Again, classroom reports. What language does the student use commonly in the classroom, or does the student seem to be understanding vocabulary? Does the student seem to be able to respond quickly, or is there even a question that there might be a hearing loss? Observing the student's interactions with other students in terms of their normal speech patterns. And where appropriate, you may want to have the speech and language pathologist actually do a language evaluation. One that's not on the list, on the PowerPoint list, would be family. Again, what does the family report, particularly where the child may be an English language learner or English is the second language for that family? What language is the most dominant language at home? Those are the kinds of things you want to be looking for into the communication. For recreation and leisure and extracurricular, again, family reports. Look at your physical education classroom results, PE, how interactive is the student. The student is a good source for what do they like to do, what is, what is their recreation, and have they had any prior extracurricular participation, and to what effect, how well, how involved are they, or have they been in the past. Jobs and job training sources, you might have vocational training records, you could have a formal vocational assessment, or you could just use student interview. Health, physical, again, family reports pertinent information that might have been used in the comprehensive evaluation. That's one of the places often where medical information comes into play. School nurse reports might be a good source for looking at whether or not there are any health concerns that you need to be considering in writing the IEP. Physical education class results is another place to look for some of this physical and health uh, involvement. Does a child get tired easily? in PE or have excuses for skipping PE. And finally, the self-report from the student. Post-secondary education is probably going to be obtained possibly from counselor interviews, but probably mostly from student interviews um, and asking the student what they want to do or what they're expecting to do when they leave high school. And community participation, again, would be probably family reports and student self-reports. For home and living, you can look at the family, student reports, in-school observations, just to see how independent the student is. And then there are other things like assistive technology accommodations or modifications. You would look for the family. Teacher reports, what kinds of accommodations have been used in the past? Does a teacher find that the student is more successful when using a peer, for example, peer buddy? Or the family often is a good source for knowing whether or not there might be some accommodation that has worked in the past or at home. And finally, asking the student, him or herself. So those are possible sources of information. Let's take a look then at what present performance or skills looks like. What 
we really want to do is focus on what the student can do. What is it that the student can do in school and at home? What kind of accommodations have helped in the past? And what is the current performance on state assessments and in the classroom? Notice all of these points are descriptions of present performance. They're not talking about what's missing. It's talking about what is the current performance. Classroom-based performance could be things like curriculum-based measurement or formative assessment, tools that are specifically designed to connect to the curriculum, providing data to clearly describe what the student can do. And curriculum-based performance is important because it allows us to compare the student where they currently are, uh, sort of in a, as a baseline, with their progress that they make by looking at the current expectations in the curriculum. This is a good time for me to make a couple of points about classroom-based performance, or what we call curriculum-based measurement. Another term that's used is formative assessment. These are tools that are specifically designed to connect to the curriculum. Instead of doing some assessment or test that has been designed by a publisher, we're using the material that is from the general curriculum to do the assessment. And they provide data that clearly describe what the student can do, and it allows comparing growth over time because what we're going to do is do a formative assessment, use it as the baseline, and then come back and assess again on that curriculum so that we have a timeline or a learning curve that we can actually graph. Some of the examples that you may be aware of of curriculum-based performance measures are things like Bibbles, Easy Curriculum-Based Measurement, Easy CBM, Ames Web. You could use teacher unit tests would be a classroom-based performance. Or there are also some just direct common assessments that you can create by using the curriculum in the classroom. So once we have all of the data, then we want to get into writing our statements. Some criteria for writing statements are some things to think about. First of all, the statements should accurately describe the performance of the student that includes both the academic and the non-academic. Note again that I'm saying that they explicitly describe what the student can do. There should be a direct relationship between these statements of what the student can do and the evaluation or assessment data that you have. You want to use objective, measurable terms. You want to stay away from scores as much as possible, especially raw scores that simply are things like the 56th percentile, because they don't have the same meaning as objective, measurable terms. So you want to ensure that the scores are self-explanatory if you do use test scores. You want to make sure that when the parent takes that IEP home with them, if there's a score on there, they will have a clear understanding of what that score means. Here are some examples of specific verb phrases versus vague verb phrases. And the specific phrases are the kinds of things that are objective and measurable. So greeting peers appropriately tells me more than if I say a student is friendly. Or if I say the student can count to 25 gives me a clear example of math skill the student can do versus received a math score on 90, when I don't know what the test actually measured. A 90% doesn't really tell me anything. Or speaks in one to two word sentences tells me the level of communication skill that the student has much more easily or clearly than can talk well. And you can read the rest of the examples for yourself. 